everyone. My name is Professor Tom Harrison from St. George's University of London, and this morning I'm going to take you through the antifungal management of uh, cryptococcal infection. So these were our learning objectives. First of all, that you should be aware of the different phases of antifungal management for cryptococcal meningitis, and then, of course, specifically aware of the particular antifungal regimens used in each of these different phases. In addition, I'm going to introduce you to some important new data that reiterates the importance of using flucytosine as a component of induction treatment for severe cryptococcal infection, and also new data about the duration of amphotericin B in induction treatment for HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis. Thirdly, um, it's important to be aware of the timing of any initiation of antiretroviral therapy or any modification in antiretroviral therapy after cryptococcal meningitis in HIV-associated uh, cryptococcal meningitis. And lastly, also to be aware of the antifungal management of pulmonary and other forms of cryptococcal infection. So uh, initially, though, just to put the, the antifungal uh, therapy in the context of the broader management of the patient. And suffice to say that patients with uh, symptomatic, suspected symptomatic, uh, CNS or, or, or systemic cryptococcosis need admission to hospital for thorough evaluation. And to, so that uh, this will also allow uh, uh, optimal antifungal therapy for uh, treatment of cryptococcal meningoencephalitis if this is confirmed, or the treatment of severe pulmonary or disseminated cryptococcal infection. Thirdly, um, uh, it's important if cryptococcal meningitis is confirmed that the patient is in hospital to allow measurement and management of the very common complication of raised intracranial pressure, which is uh, also the subject of another uh, talk in this series. And then, as we've said already, if in case this is HIV-related uh, cryptococcal meningitis, which of course is the vast majority of the global burden of cryptococcal meningitis, to allow for planning for the appropriate timing of the introduction or modification of antiretroviral therapy. So this just introduces you to the three phases of uh, treatment. And this uh, strategy really was based on a landmark study led by uh, Charles van der Horst, published almost 20 years ago now, and, it, uh, and, and showing better outcomes when this strategy was used with an initial induction phase of two weeks of amphotericin B-based uh, combination treatment, followed by consolidation with high-dose uh, fluconazole, and then a maintenance treatment with lower doses of fluconazole, just 200 milligrams a day for at least a year and until immune reconstitution has occurred with antiretroviral therapy in HIV-associated infection. So again, just to put the antifungal in the context of other very important uh, 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 aspects of patient management, again, as we said, upfront uh, management of raised uh, pressure. And then very importantly, uh, management steps to reduce the side effects of the drugs we're using and to monitor and, and treat any side effects. So there's very good evidence, for example, that giving an extra liter of normal saline per day to patients whilst they're on amphotericin B reduces the renal impairment uh, associated with amphotericin B uh, treatment. It's important to give preemptive electrolyte replacement in the form of potassium and magnesium supplements to counteract the electrolyte wasting that occurs with amphotericin B. And of course, it's important that we monitor these electrolytes, as well as, importantly, monitoring the hemoglobin because of the anemia that's uh, uh, a very significant anemia associated with amphotericin B treatment. Also to monitor the neutrophil count if we are using uh, flucytosine and to monitor creatinine in view of the possible renal impairment with amphotericin B. Also, no, don't forget to uh, uh, look carefully at the, any lines for, for uh, giving intravenous amphotericin B because of the phlebitis that the drug is associated with. It's important to flush the lines well and also to replace them early uh, uh, if they become uh, inflamed because of the significant and, and potentially serious consequences of secondary uh, bacterial line infections. Then lastly, don't forget that these patients are highly immunosuppressed and they're, they're vulnerable to other complications of late-stage HIV infection. So it's important that we monitor and investigate and treat any other such infections, notably, of course, uh, tuberculosis and other bacterial infections. And then later on during the maintenance phase of antifungal therapy, uh, uh, keep an eye out for, monitor, and manage any 
cryptococcal immune reconstitution syndrome. Again, this is the subject of a, of a separate uh, short talk in this series. So what about uh, induction antifungal uh, therapy? And just to show you the evidence uh, for this uh, current gold standard of two weeks combination of amphotericin B uh, and flucytosine. As I said, it was originally based on a, a study done 20 years ago, but more imp uh, importantly, perhaps more recently, this study carried out in Vietnam and led by uh, Jeremy Day, showing that the combination of amphotericin B and flucytosine uh, was associated with reduced mortality uh, compared to using amphotericin B alone. And as you can see in this trial, actually the amphotericin B and fluconazole combination appeared to be of intermediate efficacy. But as I mentioned, now we have some new data from the ACTA trial carried out across a number of hospitals in different countries in sub-Saharan Africa, which has reiterated and clearly shown that flucytosine is superior to fluconazole as a partner drug given with amphotericin B, as shown here. In addition, the ACTA trial looked at a number of other uh, induction regimens for HIV-associated uh, cryptococcal meningitis and showed, in fact, that uh, amphotericin B and flucytosine for just one week uh, looked at least as good as two weeks and was better tolerated than two weeks amphotericin B and flucytosine. And also that an oral combination of two weeks of high-dose fluconazole with 1,200 milligrams a day and flucytosine was also highly effective. Moving on to less resource-restricted uh, settings, there's important data that liposomal amphotericin B is uh, as effective as conventional amphotericin B, but importantly has less side effects than the conventional amphotericin B. And uh, because of this, in many centers in uh, resource-rich settings in North America and Europe, uh, liposomal amphotericin B has become the usual formulation for treatment of cryptococcal meningitis. Lastly, about induction uh, treatment, uh, you should be aware that uh, uh, the duration of uh, induction treatment in non-HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis uh, um, uh, varies and is sometimes uh, longer than the, the recommended two weeks for HIV-associated uh, disease. In uh, patients who've had transplant and then because of their immunosuppression uh, develop cryptococcal meningitis, it is recommended to use liposomal amphotericin B if you can because of this issue that it's better tolerated, especially in that patient uh, group. Uh, and the recommendation is uh, with liposomal amphotericin and flucytosine for two to four weeks in transplant-associated cryptococcal meningitis. If liposomal amphotericin B is used alone, then the recommendation is for a somewhat higher dose of six milligram per kilogram per day for four to six weeks. And then finally, in the so-called non-HIV, non-transplant group, including the patients who are apparently immunocompetent but who nevertheless develop cryptococcal meningitis, the recommendation is for amphotericin B and flucytosine for between four to six weeks of induction treatment. And obviously when you're talking about such a long induction therapy, uh, the reality is that most patients would need to switch to liposomal amphotericin B or even start if it's possible with lip liposomal amphotericin B because of the difficulty of delivering such a long induction uh, course with conventional amphotericin B. Consolidation phase treatment is with fluconazole at four to 800 uh, milligrams a day for the next eight weeks. And I think it's fair to say that in recent years, there's a tendency towards using the higher dose of 800 milligrams a day because of the huge amount of data we have now about the safety of this drug at that uh, dosage. And then after uh, 10 weeks of antifungal therapy, uh, maintenance treatment with fluconazole at the lower dose of 200 uh, milligrams a day. And this should be continued for at least one year and until immune reconstitution has occurred in the, in the setting of HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis. And that's usually defined by a CD4 count of above 100 and an undetectable viral load for uh, three months or more. So as I say, I wanted to also talk to you about the importance of the timing of antiretroviral therapy uh, in HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis, because it's very clear that if antiretroviral therapy is started too soon, then the patients are at increased risk of severe 
uh, immune reconstitution reactions, and they have increased mortality. As shown here on this graph from the uh, results from the COAT study led by David Boulware and colleagues. And so the current recommendation is that in antiretroviral naive patients with cryptococcal meningitis, the ART should be started between four to six weeks after starting uh, antifungal therapy. The kind of exception uh, to this is in unmasking cases of uh, cryptococcal iris, so-called unmasking cases, where cryptococcal meningitis presents for the first time, uh, after, uh, usually early after the start of antiretroviral therapy. And in that case, in those cases, the antiretroviral therapy should be uh, continued. And then finally, there's an increasingly important group. These are patients who have had antiretroviral uh, uh, experience, but are still presenting later with cryptococcal meningitis, with low CD4 counts, either due to uh, problems of adherence to antiretroviral therapy or failing, or because they're failing antiretroviral therapy due to resistance. And in those cases, uh, I think it's, it's, it's wise to, again, to defer the restart of antiretroviral therapy or, or uh, switching to second line antiretroviral therapy in the case of resistance, that those uh, uh, should be also deferred until four weeks into antifungal therapy. So what about uh, non-CNS cryptococcal infection, pulmonary cryptococcosis and infection at other sites? Here the recommendations are if you have mild disease, mild pulmonary disease or mild disease at other sites and you've ruled out CNS involvement, there's no fungemia. Uh, you, you're dealing with a single site of infection in an immunocompetent patient, then uh, fluconazole therapy for six to 12 months remains uh, the, 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 the recommended uh, uh, treatment. There's also one special situation, which is of a solitary pulmonary nodule, which has been completely resected, usually for, for diagnostic purposes. Uh, in an immunocompetent patient with no evidence of any further lung or extrapulmonary involvement. And in that uh, situation, then some experts suggest you can hold or stop antifungal therapy and just observe carefully those patients. Just important to say that it is important to rule out CNS disease, uh, and obviously the way to do that would be to do a lumbar puncture, especially if, if patients have any form of immunosuppression presenting with pulmonary disease or disease at other sites. And then finally, of course, to reiterate though, that if your pulmonary disease is severe, if you have severe disease at any other site, or if in addition you have concomitant CNS involvement, then the patient should be treated as, as for CNS uh, disease, as for cryptococcal meningitis. So just in terms of summary antifungal recommendations, Amphotericin B uh, based induction treatment kills cryptococcus uh, faster and improves both short and long term outcomes compared with fluconazole monotherapy. Flucytosine as a partner drug in induction treatment improves survival. It's very important to manage uh, and, and reduce the side effects of the drugs we're using to fluid and saline load patients during Amphotericin B uh, treatment to monitor infusion sites, monitor for anemia and renal impairment and potassium loss, and preemptively replace potassium and magnesium. <coughs> and then uh, fourthly, it's important to defer uh, uh, the start or restarting or switching antiretroviral therapy in HIV-associated cryptococcal meningitis until four to six weeks into antifungal treatment. And lastly, uh, just to reiterate the fact that fluconazole is highly effective as a maintenance uh, treatment to prevent the relapse of disease. So I'll finish there. Thank you.